Okay, so uh, here's the situation. I love jazz! I just finished a weekend in Cork, Ireland at the Guinness Jazz Festival playing 10 gigs in four days, and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> No, yeah, it was the Guinness Jazz Festival, but <laughs> jazz in this case kind of has more of a bacchanalian connotation to it. It was a weekend of drinking and music and debauchery, not listening to jazz and say the tradition of Duke Ellington. This is gonna be the first gig of many this weekend. Duke Ellington, by the way, and many other jazz musicians from the tradition actually really didn't like the term. I love jazz! It was so associated with New Orleans whorehouses and bordellos and had a very vulgar feeling to it. Nothing compared to the locals. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, uh, they, they have these competitions, like all the local Irish musicians, on like how many gigs you can actually play in one weekend. But Paul sure. City has 14. Paul has Fuck. That's what he 14. said. Like, how's there enough time? Like, if every gig is two hours... People be doing multiple brunch gigs. <laughs> it's like 11 to 1, and 1 like to 3, 3 to 5, thing. 5 to 7. All that good stuff. Yeah, I guess it's technically possible. I'm a little ambivalent about this alternative definition of the word jazz. I love jazz! However, the whole city gets excited to go out and see live music. Jazz means listening to live music played by really good musicians, and... For those musicians, jazz, at least in the context of the Guinness Jazz Festival, means working yourself to the bone to appease those masses. By the end, you're just like, everything you're playing is just absolute bullshit, but yeah. by the end, <laughs> brother, we're gonna start with the bullshit. First show. All right, gig one, done. Like nine more to go. Okay, so it's morning of the second day. Uh, we had some fun last night. Haley bit into the cucumber, and then I also bit into the cucumber. Today, I'm playing eight hours worth of gigs. Four gigs today, one gig last night. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of a hell of a weekend. Anyway, let's hope that I can like, you know, stay focused enough right now <laughs> to actually play. This brunch gig is with some Irish musicians that I met last time that I was playing in Cork at the last Jazz Fest, and they're super killing. So I love thinking about the different repertoire that's called by different musicians in different countries. Like, what do American musicians like to play at jazz gigs? Or what do Irish musicians like to play? One thing that I've noticed is that the Carpenter's tune, Close to You, is being called a lot because Jacob Collier did his like hip-hop version a couple years ago. It works pretty well. for how many gigs Paul's playing today? I'd say over five. Well, I mean, he's a trombone player too, it's insane. But I guess five. trombone players don't have to play the whole time. In fact, it's preferred if they don't play the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have 10 hours of trombone, 10 <laughs> hours of sad sounds. But... Trombone, did you say sad saxophone? Or sad sound. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like calling the trombone a sad saxophone. 
<laughs> Hashtag sad saxophone. He asked if we had an amp, and I told him he said to play right into the PA. All right, I'm gonna play super quiet. I think. I mean, I'll I'll do my best jazz impression. Something tells me it's gonna be a small room, so playing to the PA is like gonna be cool. That's that's my <laughs> Alright, I'm halfway done today. I'm feeling alright. All the big you? All the small things you are? All the small things you are. Do the intro? I don't know. Listening to jazz. That's weird. That was the third gig of the day. So it's like 11 o'clock now. The funk gig goes from 12.30 to 2.30. We played till 2.30. We played till 2.30. Yeah, I'm a tired boy. Okay, we're headed to the fourth gig of the day. You know, fry? Get that a little fry, bro. Like, get in there. Say the secret password. Peaches! Jazz! They were putting like, their mind right now. Hey! hey. It worked! Thank you. So much. Thanks, Thank you. Is it the Oliver Plunkett upstairs? We've been playing every night downstairs. Oh, it is slammed. <laughs> Saturday night. Absolute chaos. <laughs> Dear God! Don't die! The people, they still need the jazz. Watch out! Watch out for the jazz! You guys hang here. I'm gonna see if Ian's around back. He thinks we're loading in the back. Should we? That security guy said something to me that I did straight up not understand.
of my favorite moments of this gig occurs when our sax player, Jim Piela, went out into the audience and did what we call yakety sax or party time. And you see all the people like dancing around him, but then he busts out like these really like crazy post bop atonal side slipped lines. <laughs> Which I was kind of besides myself laughing at at the time, because it really worked. He was playing them with fire and energy and passion. He was playing really in the pocket, so people were responding to that. And the weirder outside stuff was kind of like an in-joke for us on stage. I think the important lesson to be learned here is that it really doesn't matter what you play, so long as you play it with intent. And then people will respond to that. Okay, eight gigs down. It's day four. I'm very exhausted. Um, but it's been fun. It's been good. This is the third brunch gig. That was the uh, ninth gig <laughs> in four days. I have one more to go. Uh, I'm very tired, but I, uh, I feel like my chops are really like sticking. I feel like any musical idea I have, I can actually execute it on my instrument. You know, yesterday was six hours of performance and six hours of like improvising and like playing around stuff and like getting ideas like shed and you know, being free with it. It is unbelievably tiring though, and I can't see anybody keeping this up for any length of time. So um, I'm gonna be very glad when it's all over in about three hours. Look at all these jazz fans. They're just clamoring for the jazz. It's like a Sunday afternoon and this place is absolutely slammed. Are you ready, Joss? <laughs> And yeah, that was the uh, the Cork Guinness Jazz Festival. Ten gigs within four days, 20 hours of performing. Oh my god. I'd really like to thank Ian of the clubs for flying us all out there and making funk and jazz music in Ireland. I'd like to thank Paul Dunlea. I'd like to thank Dylan Howe, Claire Sands, and Brendan Fennessy. And I'd also like to thank the people of Cork, Ireland for teaching this American the true meaning of jazz. Fucking shit up. Peace.